Yo, what's going on, guys? Welcome to today's live stream. Uh, <laughs> what's going on? Um, so it's uh, Thursday. Thursday. Uh, Thursday is a rest day for me, even though I took yesterday off because um, my shit was sore. Uh, today I just got up and. Uh, went out to see my massage therapist nice and early. So that was painful. <laughs> as good as always. Um, as good as it can be. Um, so went out there, did that, and uh, got beat up. And came back home. Took care of the dog, got some meals in. Uh, and then uh, my... My uh, encoder showed up for my um, mobile live streaming stuff that I've been playing around with. So I've spent the last hour trying to get that all set up. It's a little confusing. Um, so, you know, I'll figure it out eventually. But at the moment, still don't have it quite figured out. But anyways, actually, I should probably turn that off, huh? One sec, I gotta turn this off. That shit doesn't need to be sitting there on, so. Um, yeah, so I've been doing that, and uh, I did fulfill about 10 carnitine orders and uh here we are so what's going on with all of you guys bobby what's up bring us uh there we go what's going on i started taking melanotan and i'm getting dots on my face some of them look like birthmarks is that normal yeah man yeah man that's normal um, I've said that in several Melanotan videos, that is kind of the negative side effect to it, is that some people will, uh, <laughs> will develop freckles, um, from it. Uh, some people will, you know, develop new moles from it. Uh, some dark spots will come out, you know, if that's what you're prone to, you know, it, it it is what it is. Um, so, you know, that's why I say use it at your own risk. All of this stuff is use at your own risk. Um, for me personally, I don't get freckles from it. Um, you know, I, I do notice, you know, some moles will turn a little darker from Melanotan, but um, yeah, no, I, uh, I don't get freckles from it. Um, but I have heard that that is kind of part of it, and that's part of the risk that you are taking with this stuff. It makes everything, it, it brings out new spots, makes everything turn darker. Um, yeah, that's normal, man. So if you don't like it, if you don't like it, stop taking it and uh, they should go away. Um, I have heard that for some people it was permanent, um, but yeah, uh, stop taking it if you don't like the random spots on your face, <laughs> um, and it, it may or may not go away, so I haven't taken any Melanotan in almost a year at this point, it feels like. It's at least been six months, I'm sure. Um, I'm actually looking to start taking that again because I do feel kind of uh, white for me so anyways Benny Parcher what is up dude your daily videos are pretty consistent I have a question is this live stream members only no it is not members only um, the people that are members in here are people that have uh, uh, badges next to their name so if they don't have a badge they're not they're not members okay so no, this is not a members-only stream, and if you're trying to ask, like, the, the you know, 
<laughs> you know these streams are posted and saved to my YouTube channel, so even if you were going to try to ask a members-only question on here, uh, like, no. <laughs> no, bro. Um, if you have a question pertaining to the unlimited email membership or the homebrew membership, like if you have questions that are that fall under those uh, umbrellas fucking email me that's what it's for <laughs> email me those are those are private questions not for the public priscilla what up great way to end the day the roid rage way <laughs> yes uh big country what's up dude hello um, Connor, watching during my push day, is overhead press a necessity for bigger delts? I didn't do overhead presses all last year, so I'm going to say no. And I feel like my delts were like a strong point for me. Um, so no. The, no exercise. <laughs> no exercise is a necessity. I, I'm surprised you even asked that. No exercise is a necessity. There's not one exercise out there that is a necessity. It's just that exercising <laughs> is a necessity. So, uh, what's up, Waldo? Eric, with two leg days, is it best to have a day just for quads and another just for hams? Well, it depends on where you're at with your training, you know, how advanced you are, how advanced you aren't. Um, depends on how much time you have in the day, in the week, how much endurance your muscles have, how many, um, how much volume you can handle. There's a lot of things that go into whether or not you should do um, a, a split leg day where one day is more quads and the other day is more hams. So, is it best? I mean, it depends on the person. So, sorry. Bill Pryor, what's going on? Would adding Anavar with Primo and Masteron be too much DHT derivatives in a cycle? No, I've done it. It was absolutely fine. So, no. Um, no dad bods. Steroid that'll help me gain strength, but not add weight to my frame. That, <laughs> that is a great question. And I feel that it falls mostly uh, under um, your nutrition protocol and your training protocol more than anything, whether you gain weight or not. Um, so, you know, as long as you are training the way a power lifter should train or an Olympic lifter should train, you know, people that need to gain strength without gaining body weight... Um, as long as you're following a good training protocol, like technically your strength should be going up from that. Um, and then whether or not you gain weight or not is, is way more dependent on your calories than anything. Now, a steroid that can help with neuromuscular fi uh, uh, firing, that's going to be traditionally the orals, you know, things like, uh, Winstrol, things like Anadrol, Halotestin, um... I mean, uh, the I feel like the orals in general are much better at that. Um, also, a lot of people feel that Tren falls in that line as well, in that, uh, you know, the, the nervous system, neuromuscular connection is much stronger. The firing of the muscles is much stronger with Tren. So, you know, you, you do have a lot of... I, I mean, I feel like most steroids will, will be able to do this for you. The thing is, is that... Um, you just need to be really on top of your diet, you know, uh, and that's going to determine more than anything, whether or not you actually gain weight or not with your strength. So Pisa, what up? Do you utilize drop sets, rest pause or any intensifiers or any, or any, or all your exercises? Um, right now, no. Uh, but, um, that's because I took, like, all of December off, and I feel like a, a newborn baby again. So, um, right now, no, because my, my training is so new at this point, um, and there's no need for it. Like, I'm, my ass is getting kicked doing just basic straight sets, 
you know, with at an RPE of of uh, like, well, well, no, not RPE. Uh, what it re, uh, reps in reserve of like three, you know. So I don't. I, I'm not doing any intensifiers at the moment of any kind. It's literally just straight sets and just getting back in the gym and, and making sure everything feels okay and trying not to do too much too soon so I don't get injured because I'm 35 years old and if I get injured then, <laughs> you know, that sucks. <laughs> so, um, no, I am not, but I was, you know, prior to this break, um, prior to December, yeah, sure, I was throwing in drop sets, I was throwing in supersets, I was throwing in... Uh, rest pause sets, you know, uh, not with every exercise. In general, I feel like if you want to include those into a workout, um, you know, maybe pick one or two uh, exercises per muscle group to do those with on your last sets. Um, but no, right now, <laughs> right now, right now would be the time that anybody would want to train with me and make me look like a fool because my my volume, my endurance is just garbage right now. So, yeah. Gabriel, um, how, how much time before working out do you inject the L-carnitine? That's about 30 minutes before. I get a bit sore after the injection, so just wondering if it's okay. Y yeah, that's normal. Totally normal. Yeah, I, I, I'll do it probably 30 minutes before. You know, I typically walk to the gym, you know, as long as it's not like raining or snowing. Um, but yeah, I'll inject it here and then it's like a 20 minute walk to the gym. So it's about 30 minutes before. Nick, what up? I don't get any pumps at the gym, even when taking cream of rice pre-workout. Do you have any suggestions? That means your insulin sensitivity is probably pretty poor. That's what that usually means. Um, yeah, that's what that usually means. It means your insulin sensitivity is not very good. Um, what's your fasted blood glucose? Uh, what is your insulin... Uh, level at how much you know, are you taking insulin during the day or taking growth hormone during the day? There's a lot of things, um, you know, that can affect insulin sensitivity, but typically that is uh, a cause for concern. Um, yeah, like pumps are, are, are a, a very good indicator that you're not utilizing the carbs that you're eating very well. So, yeah, I mean, that's something to pay attention to. Um, I don't know, man. So, how's your, uh, how's your blood sugar? How much insulin is your body pumping out? How much insulin are you pumping into your body? How much growth hormone are you pumping into your body? I mean, there's a lot of, a lot of questions there. Twitch, someone's watching on Twitch. What's up, Fallout Savannah? Hey Chase, get a subscribe button, bro. Kappa, get a subscribe button, bro. I don't. Sorry, I just started streaming on Twitch, so I don't know what that means. <laughs> do I do I not have a do I not have a subscribe button on Twitch? I don't know. I'm sorry. I, I'm I'm like baby status when it comes to Twitch. I don't really know what's going on over there. I just figured I'd start streaming over there to reach more people <laughs> since I can. Um, so yeah, currently I stream right now. We're streaming on YouTube, which is where primarily most people watch. Um, I'm also streaming to Twitch and then I'm also streaming to Facebook. So yeah. Um, Ron Burgundy, the man, the myth, Legend, legendary status with his his pink medal, his pink badge, and uh, his generosity. What's going on, man? Lurking continues. What up? Doing good, feeling good. Except there is one thing. I'm a little concerned about something. I uh, my calf 
my right calf up high at the uh, at the uh, origin spot of my calf, kind of on the medial side of it, has been sore, has been really sore, and I haven't done calves since like November. So that's kind of weird. Um, I don't know if I would have, how I would have strained it or stressed it. Makes me scared that maybe I've got like a DVT going on, but I don't have any swelling in my lower limb. It's just sore. There's no bruising. It's just super sore. So, so I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I told my, my guy and he, uh, my massage therapist I went and saw today. Uh, he did some extra work on that area, scraped it out. That hurt like hell. Somebody asked if I had my um, calf scrape before. Scra the scraping did not feel good. Um, so yeah, he, he scraped my calf. He worked on it with his elbows a little bit. Um, so it's sore now. It's probably more sore just because he, he worked the shit out of it. But um, hopefully it'll hopefully it'll hear, heal up and, and be you know no big deal. in the next uh, few days, so. All right, uh, Fallout Savannah, what's up? Um, no, this might be weird, but I want shoulder veins. Is that genetic? No, it's not genetic. I'm super lean, around 10%, and I don't have them. Is it a certain type of drug thing, like EQ? Um, okay, I, I don't... I'm, I'm just, I'm guessing since your Twitch name is Fallout Savannah, that you're a female? I don't know. If you're not, I'm sorry. Um, because you say you're super lean and that's 10%. As a female, yes, that is that is extremely lean. But as a male, that's not lean enough. <laughs> it, it, like, at 10%, when I'm at 10%, yes, I have shoulder veins. Um, but for a female... To not have shoulder veins at 10%, like, I, I'm sorry, I, I don't mean, like, I don't, I don't know if you are male or female, but I'm just going by what I see on your name. Um, 10% for a woman is extremely lean. And that would be uh, very strange to not have shoulder veins, but veins in general I do feel are very much uh, genetic. Um, if you're a male, I would say you just need to get leaner. Um, the thing about EQ and the reason that I feel that it increases vascularity, and I don't know, it just, like, it could be wrong, but in my mind it makes sense. Um, the reason I feel that EQ is the uh, steroid of choice that causes vascularity in great amounts is because EQ raises hematocrit greater than <laughs> many of the other steroids out there. It is like the hematocrit razor, um, which in turn, it's very good at raising blood pressure. So if you think about that, if you, if you have very high blood pressure, very high hematocrit from using lots of EQ... What do you think that's going to do to your vascular system? You know, if, you're, if you've got a ton of blood rushing through your veins, like, they're going to kind of stretch and grow a little bit from that. Um, like, this is not a healthy thing at all. Um, this is how I feel uh, EQ helps with <laughs> vascularity. Um, so... Um, you know, I don't recommend using it uh, for that purpose, um, but I do feel that that's that's one reason why it is very good at doing that. So um, you're not you're not commenting anymore. So I, I don't know if I'm helping you out or not with what I'm saying. So, uh, anyways, moving on. Uh, what's up, Blue Sti Tom? What's up? On my second week of Trend Ace, started really low as recommended. Only signs are acne. I know it's early and we are all different, but I'm not impressed. Thoughts? I mean, you shouldn't really be impressed with with anything that you do. I, I think that's the 
I think that's the biggest problem with with gear usage is that guys guys have these expectations that are just so high you know i feel like guys think that you take something and you should just be able to feel it and know that you're on something and like it's just some kind of like psycho injection drug that you just did where it really sh it's really not like i don't i the only thing that i will say that i get is just like an overall like feeling of well-being basically is is kind of the only difference that i get like uh, most of december um like my injections were pretty infrequent and uh you know, when we went to Spain, I, I, I didn't inject anything for that entire time period. So it was basically, I did an injection before we left, and then I was 10 days of nothing. And then uh, came back, did an injection, then we left again, you know, so it was another like four or five days of nothing. And then since then, you know, since we've been home, you know, I've been back on my daily injections. And I do feel just like better in general. You know, I feel like things are back to clicking, um, you know, the way that they were. So, yeah, I, I think that that's pretty much the only thing that we should notice from stuff. And, and sadly, you know, the only way that guys determine whether or not what they're using is good or not is what side effects they get. And as you stated, the only sides that you've gotten are acne. Like, darn, that, that's terrible shit. Like, I've only gotten acne from it. I was expecting night sweats, no sleep, crazy hunger, going hypo, raging at the steering wheel. Like, all these things that people think that, you know, should happen. And when it doesn't happen, you assume that the product is crap. Like, you shouldn't feel... You shouldn't feel anything. You should just, in general, have a general, better feeling of well-being. The, the things that will happen are, is that you will slowly get stronger. You will slowly be able to get bigger. But all of those things also depend strongly on if your nutrition is right. If you're eating like crap and you're not injecting much, you know, you're not going to notice anything. Um, and that's where people make the mistake of just increasing their dosage until they start to feel something. Like, they start to get the night sweats. They start to get insomnia. You know, they start going hypoglycemic. They start looking for side effects to justify their use. And uh, it's just not the way... It's not the way to you know, say whether or not what you're doing is good or not. Um, like, I, I think that trend is, is it, it's very good. I mean, the thing about it is, is that it's very good at maintaining muscle mass when you're in a deficit. So, that's really it. Sure, it can make you a little stronger. But again, I feel that that comes down a lot more to how you're training and what your nutrition is like, you know? Um, so, yeah, I, I think... I think the fact that you're experiencing acne is is bad. <laughs> like, personally, I haven't experienced any sort of acne in... in I can't remember the last time, you know? Um... But I would probably attribute that to the fact that I don't use enough stuff that my body can't handle to have some sort of side effect like that. So, um, I don't know, Tom. That's, uh, I mean, you say really low. Like, what what dose is really low? Like, I, I, I think, again, you know, as I initially said, I feel like people just have way too high expectations on what they think gear is going to do for them. Um... And then the other thing 
people just looking for side effects and they assume their product is no good if they don't have any side effects, so. <clears throat> Midnight Manny. What's going on? Thoughts on T-Ball? Uh, T-Ball, you know, I don't feel... I don't really feel it's necessary. <laughs> um, because it is kind of in the same... Uh, it's, kind of, it's, it's in the same category as D-Ball and testosterone. Um, so if you're going to be using steroids, you should be using testosterone in general. And then that covers... <laughs> that covers that, you know. Um, yeah, I just, I don't, I, I think, I don't recommend this. I don't recommend that people do oral-only cycles, but, you know, if you are, if you are going to forego injections, then you do want to have a testosterone base, and I and like I said, I don't recommend doing this and, and doing orals only, but, you know, people are going to do what they're going to do. That's where T-ball would come into play, or even D-ball would come into play. Personally, I would choose T-ball over D-ball because D-ball, I feel, is is more harsh on your organs than, than T-ball. Um, so that would be the only situation where I think that it's all right to use, but even then, it's like, I, it would be better to just straight up inject testosterone, you know, something bioidentical, you know? So, yeah. All right. Moving on, Connor. If someone is good health based off blood work, would running 400 tests for two to three years straight be a sustainable thing to do? Add it on to tell me Sartan and a statin. You know, I'm going to say, uh, I'm going to say, yeah. <laughs> I'm going to say, yeah, you very well could run. You know, it, it, that's the case where it's like you should be absolutely keep checking your blood work. You know, keep checking your blood pressure, keep checking your blood sugar. As long as all of those are are good, yeah, I don't see why someone couldn't just go straight 400 for long term. Um, because the thing is, like, what could what's what's the worst that can happen of just using straight testosterone, just just testosterone? You know, nothing else. The worst thing that could happen is that your DHT and estrogen ratio gets off. And your estrogen gets so high that it starts to um, uh, cause your prostate to enlarge. Well, that doesn't really happen until estrogen gets like above 300. You know? So... Um, you have to be using a lot of testosterone for that to happen. You know, like gyno, so what? Gyno is not a big deal. You get surgery, you get it cut out, and you move on with your life. But the enlarged prostate thing, like that's the that's the serious thing that we want to prevent from happening. You know, um, I mean, the other thing, is, of course, is uh, increasing angiotensin and aldosterone so that your water retention goes up so high. You know, this is if you're not on an ARB. Um, your blood pressure goes through the roof on super high testosterone. But, um, like, that's the main thing that we need to be worried about is prostate growth and then high blood pressure. But, you know, uh, if you're doing what I recommend, then uh, you probably won't have uh, blood pressure issues or cholesterol issues. Um, so, so yeah, I, I mean, I think 400 is a drop in the bucket, honestly, like your, your total estrogen levels, they probably aren't going to be, they'll probably be around a hundred maybe, but even then, like, it's not a big deal if it goes to even 200, like the only issue there, as I said before, was like gyno, but 
you know, that's not something that's going to kill you. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, what's your weight down to now? Oh, I don't know. I haven't I haven't weighed since uh uh when did I weigh? I weighed Monday and I was I was like 254 on Monday. So, um, last week, Monday, I was 258, <laughs> so, um, I don't know where it's at right now. I do feel like I've, you know, come down a little bit. I, I'm probably sitting right around 250 at this point, but, um, I don't know. I'll check it again Monday, uh, and then I'll be a little more consistent with that once I start dialing in my macros and, and calories and all of that, um... But yeah, right now I'm just kind of just eating better instead of just eating whatever I want. So we'll see when we get there. Uh, big country, that boy Ron Burgundy on the prowl. Chili, what's up? Didn't get your stream notification until just now. Well, that's okay. I've only been on for 32 minutes. Um, for the next transformation challenge, any possibility top prize will be a training day at your gym. I mean, that could absolutely be something worth doing. Um, yeah, that would be cool. You could set up a cot in there. You could sleep. <laughs> we could have a little slumber party. Wouldn't that be fun? <laughs> Shit, we could have like a meetup. Top five people meet up. I don't know. That would be that'd be tough to. I mean. <sighs> I could do that. I mean, what I based on like, because I gave what what I gave first place a thousand, second place five hundred, third place two fifty. I mean, even the third like even the two fifty that would pay for a a flight, right? I don't know. It depends on where you it depends on where you live, I guess. Um, anyways. It's an idea, something to think about. Are there any, are there anything that you would recommend to increase appetite? Move more, John. Um, my question to you is: Do you know how many steps you get a day? Do you know how much you move in the day? This is a question that you're asking for yourself. Um, um, you know, uh, increasing appetite, um, uh, Stan Everding talks about 10 minute walks post meal, um, that helps speed up digestion. Uh, it helps improve insulin sensitivity. It helps reduce bloating. Um, you know, he has all of his like strong men go for walks after they eat because they have to eat, you know. Six to ten thousand calories a day, um, you know. And then, if that's not enough of an appetite increase for you, then you got to think about like tricks to get in more calories in general. You know, like you could be, uh, be you could be <clears throat> adding in more like liquid calories. You could be adding uh, like dextrose to your meals, just like dextrose powder unflavored dextrose powder, just mix it into, like, your rice. Um, you know, like, those are the big things. Adding more fat to your meals, you know, olive oil, butter, things like that, just to increase... Like, I feel like a lot of people have trouble with appetite or eating enough or getting enough calories. Like, they're not eating enough fat to get those calories in. Or they're eating too much fat and not relying enough on carbs and doing kind of like a keto type diet and that's making it difficult for them to eat enough so there's a lot of different things that could be going on with why you're struggling to be able to eat enough or you know don't have a big enough appetite um, I'd be curious at like how much how many calories are you eating currently um, you know a lot of questions there that uh, would give me a better answer for you. So, A Rex, would lifting the muscle group you just injected help with absorb or scar tissue or anything benefit at all? 
buddy of mine said it would. I told him I don't think it makes any difference at all. Um, you know, it's 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 weird. I think that with regards to the hormone uh, being cleaved from the ester, like there's nothing that you can do that's going to change that. You know, the hormones attach to the ester. The ester takes so much time to be removed from the hormone once it's in your bloodstream, you know? Um, the only thing that I would say is that it could help increase blood flow to the area because of the inflammation that the shot will cause to the area, the localized inflammation. So, and like, you know... Uh, I don't know. Like, I, I feel like I've done this a lot, especially with, like, injecting injecting a delt and then doing lots of lateral raises. You'll find that you'll probably get a bigger pump um, with that, and it'll look a lot bigger with that. Um, it's kind of another reason why, like, I think lat injections are great, because then you can feel your lat when you're doing your back work. So... That's kind of like what I feel would be the most beneficial to injecting a muscle group before training it is it'll help create a better mind to muscle connection, which in turn just leads to better reps. So, um, so I think that there is a benefit. Um, yeah, you know, also like injecting Metaform, for example, Metaform you absolutely feel more of a pump, more blood flow to the area. You know, like that's, that, that is the strategy for growing biceps is throwing Mediform in there and then going and do your bicep work. And the pumps from that are absolutely insane, which by the way, <clears throat> uh, Mediform, the, the good people at Mediform sent me this, if we can get a focus, oh, it's backwards, <laughs> um, this is a, a 100 mil vial, and yeah, that's a sponsored athlete on it, <laughs> um, and it has my code on it. it says irons 15 if you want 15% off at Mediform. <laughs> um, good stuff. Um, but they also sent me uh, some 10 milliliter sample vials, which I haven't figured out how to how I would uh, go about uh, choosing who gets to try these, but. I don't know, maybe you guys can think of some sort of uh, reward system, way that we can, you know, give these out. <laughs> um, but yeah, um, Mediform is... Uh, Medifor? Medi Mediform. Let me, let me show you that again. I know it's backwards, but M-E-D-I-P-H-O-R-M. Mediform is a um, hyaluronic acid product. Hyaluronic acid is like what? Uh, what is it? It's what? It's what Botox is, <laughs> essentially. Um, it's like Juvederm, except we use it uh, and inject it into our muscles. And it causes a crazy amount of blood flow. <laughs> causes a crazy amount of uh, blood flow and water and nutrients go into whatever muscle you just put it into. Um, typically, guys will use this uh, and uh, will use this in their biceps. Um, I don't know. I'm not going to open it all the way, but there they are. We've got six, six 10 milliliter vials of Mediform. So if anybody thinks of a way to uh, award people with that, let me know because I haven't figured out a way what, what to do. 
maybe once a week we'll see who asks the best question and then they get a free 10 milliliter vial if you want to uh I don't know. That would suck, though, if I send it to somebody that doesn't want it, you know? <laughs> That's not going to use it. All right. <clears throat> Moving on. Um, Jal Call, best pads for soccer. Well, it would be something that increases endurance. A lot. Something that increases your endurance, because... Those guys run a shitload. So, what's going to increase endurance the most? Something that increases hematocrit the most. You know, um, a lot of guys, uh, like, it, it'd be like thinking, like, what would a marathon runner take? What would a cyclist, a bicyclist, <laughs> uh, a Tour de France guy, what would he take? Well, they would go with EPO. Um, EPO is, uh, you know, the number one thing that's going to raise hematocrit. Um, but uh, as far as like steroids go, when you just ask straight up steroids, um, again, like I said earlier, uh, Equipoise is very, very, very good at raising hematocrit. Um, so something to think about there. <laughs> um but yeah, uh, EPO is traditionally the endurance drug that people use. Um, you paired EPO up with L-carnitine, you would be an endurance beast. Um, that being said, um, I've never used EPO. I have no experience with EPO. Use it at your own risk. Please figure out how to do it before doing it. Don't buy it and ask me how to use it because I have no idea how to use it. I, I have no interest in using it, but that would be the route to go. Um, for a sport like that. Adderall for soccer? I, I don't know about that either. I've never used Adderall either, so I don't... I have no experience with that, so... I honestly I don't... I'm not sure how that would help. How much that would help. Um, Krish, what up? How should I consume Yohimbe? My daily dose is 16 milligrams. I do cardio post-workout four times a week. And work out six times. My testosterone level is 800. Where do I stand according to you? Are those two different questions? Um, okay, so Yohimbine is supposed to be taken in a completely fasted state. Otherwise, it is useless. So, you need to take your um, 16 milligrams um, pre-cardio. But you need to be in a fasted state. So... That's why most people that use Yohimbin are doing fasted cardio first thing in the morning. So, basically the best strategy for using it would be to take your Yohimbin, take a little bit of growth hormone, take a little bit of carnitine, and then hop on the treadmill or whatever cardio equipment that you're using, and that's going to pretty much maximize your fat loss there. Um, but, uh, yeah, it, it's completely useless when insulin is present in the body. Insulin basically shuts down Yohimbine. So, you know, if you're using Yohimbine and, and you start doing your fasted cardio, if you start to feel sick for any reason to, to snap out of it, to not feel sick anymore, just eat some carbs and the Yohimbine will be shut off and, uh, you know, you'll be back to normal in no time. And usually it's because you're like, you're going hypoglycemic. So, um, so yeah, I mean, you should, it, it'll be probably pretty useless post-workout, um, because, you know, you shouldn't be lifting fasted. You should have an intro workout drink, you know, so... You shouldn't be in a fasted state post cardi or post training, so it just it wouldn't make sense to me to use Yohimbine post workout pre cardio, unless like the only way that that would work is like if you trained fasted, if you had no intra workout drink, if you had no car no no calories at all, did your training, which I think is 
is not good. Did your training, then took Yohimbin, then did your cardio. So, I don't know. It's just not an optimal... It's not an optimal situation to use Yohimbin post-training pre-cardio. You know, like I said, most people use it with fasted cardio first thing in the morning. And then you say, my testosterone level is 800. Where do I stand according to you? Uh, natural. That's a... It's a very natural level of testosterone. So, cool. Um, Isa Sharon, what up? I backloaded my pins for the week since I started to inject daily. Um, how long can I store them for? My gym bro told me you can't keep them for that long because plastic will get into the oil. It depends on the, the product that you put into the um, insulin syringe, actually. So your, your friend is right, but it depends on what solvents the gear was made out of. So if the product is, um, if the product has any sort of ethyl oleate in it, that can eat the rubber of the insulin syringe. And then you've got rubber in your, um, in your syringes. Um, but a lot of people don't really use EO, ethyl oleate, so you might be fine. Um, like personally, everything that I use is made with MCT oil or grapeseed oil. Um, and those things don't cause issues with that. So, um, it, it, your friend is right, but it really depends on the product that is in the insulin syringe. So. Probably should have timestamped that, huh? But yeah, I mean, you could do that for as long as the the product that you have in there does not eat the plastic, eat the rubber of the rubber stopper on the needle. As long as it doesn't do that, you know, like you could leave it in there for a week, and I'm sure it would be fine. But just you know. Keep an eye on your needles and see what they look like at the end of a week and see how the rubber stopper on the plunger looks. But for the most part, most people will be fine with what they're using. Unless you're using something that's like uh, Test Probe 200. If you're making propionate at 200 milligrams per milliliter, strong chance that they put either guaiacol in it or ethyl oleate in it to make that happen. And that will eat rubber. For, for sure. If you're using Trenace, dosed at 200 milligrams per milliliter, that was definitely made with ethyl oleate and guaiacol. You know? So, things like that. If you're using test suspension, strong chance it's got guaiacol in it. So, just things to keep in mind. Um, where were we? Here we are. Nova Lee had luck lately bringing up lagging body parts like calves, but no luck with building more developed abs. Would ab training work best for you? Working them often. <laughs> Working them often and going to failure. Uh, the one that I do the most often is a hanging leg raise, like hanging from a pull-up bar and doing leg raises. That's the my number one go-to exercise, mostly because I also get to do a dead hang from a pull-up bar, and that has all sorts of benefits for your lats and your shoulders and all of that. So that's the that's the main reason why I choose that. But it's also you know a very hard ab exercise. So hanging leg raises is kind of my go-to. Um, my next favorite would be doing a cable crunch. That way I'm doing like some sort of weighted exercise on my abs. So those are the two that I'm, you know, um, that I go to the most. Um, yeah, and then I probably do both of them three times a week. I feel that it has definitely helped bring out uh, ab thickness, deeper cuts in the abs. So... Uh, maybe pellets would be good for travel. I mean, I wouldn't bother with it. 
It's good to see you live helping us out. Uh, Mike, are you still using Big Noise? Yes. How was it with two scoops? I mean, two scoops was great. Uh, currently, I only use one scoop pre-workout, though. Your response about the Trend Ace was what I needed to hear. I'm not seeking sides. Well, though the well-being is there, I'm at 100 milligrams split up every other day. I was just asking what you think I might expect. Um, well, I mean, if you are using only testosterone, you do want to throw in a DHT derivative with that. If, if testosterone is your only product and it's dosed, say, higher than 300 milligrams. So, you know. Yeah, I agree. A DHT compound would be more well-rounded with just testosterone. Um, and then once you have that set up, then you throw in a little bit of trend on top of it. How long do you normally cruise for before you start your next blast? Um, normally, I mean, the last few cruises that I've done, it was like six weeks. Did you name, did you name Jim because it rhymes with what you love the most? Jim. <laughs> um, not because it rhymes, but because it just sounds like Jim. I'm almost 50 now. If I eat extra at this point, I lose my ab definition instantly. Just glad I have abs at this age. Upgraded. <laughs> Christopher Bailey, welcome. Uh, where was I? You should use DHT derivatives besides 19 nor with test to balance out. Yes, that's exactly... That's exactly why you should. <laughs> that's exactly why I said you should. If you're not using Masteron with your test, that would definitely be the first step to go. Um, is to do that, and then think about adding in something else. Anyone got advice for tennis elbow? Yeah, um, I talked about that actually just a couple days ago. Maybe. Was it yesterday? Yesterday or the day before or something? Um, go through the live stream from yesterday. Go through the live stream. Because I did a live stream Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday. One of those days, you'll see a timestamp for it. Somebody asked about Tennis Elbow, and I gave him the answer for it. So, yeah. Uh, what's up, Vinny? appreciate all the knowledge. Keep crushing it. You keep crushing it. You're too strong. B, what's... What? Oh, yeah, I already answered that. John Ludovic. I get very many minimal steps per day. Well, that's probably why your appetite's not very good. Um, I will try the walks post-meals, already relying on liquid supplementation, but I will look more into it. I'm currently eating around 1,800, 2,000 a day forcefully. Well, man, yeah, if your steps are low, then that that's going to be... That's going to be, a, like, your your output is low, you know. Um, I would say a minimum. <laughs> what are you doing? What do you got down there? What's that? This is, this is not for you. This is mine. No. <laughs> That's not yours. We're going to take a doggy a doggy timeout for a second. What's up, man? You okay? What was I talking about? Yeah, dude, steps. Um, yeah, if you don't have an appetite and you can only eat like 2,000 calories a day, 
Um, <laughs> go do 10,000 steps a day and tell me what your appetite feels like. <laughs> Um, yeah, that's a huge reason. Like, if your steps, if you don't even know how many steps you're taking because it's so little, I, I mean, you, you got to move. You got to burn calories if you are going to give your body a reason to want to eat more calories for sure. So, yeah, man, that's that's huge. <clears throat> Cash chats. Um, Carterine for soccer. <laughs> I wouldn't use carterine for anything. I would not use that, that cancer product. I don't think that there's any reason at all to use carterine. Carnitine. Carnitine. That's what you want. Mike, EQ really added to my output in any endurance activities. Mind you, I was low dose, 300 max a week. Yeah, because you also don't want to... Uh, you also don't want to harm your health. You know, EQ is quite uh, kidney toxic. Jim, get out of there. What are you doing, man? You alright? He's getting curious. Dude, what are you doing? Just go lay down. Go eat some food. Um, yeah, you want to be careful with EQ, so yeah, I, this is a, a great recommendation. 300 will be enough. <laughs> uh, Bailey, what's up? Let's say you had to start all over again at 18 to 21 years old. How would you structure your training and drugs for that first five years? <laughs> um, why don't you just hire me as a coach and then we'll, uh, we'll discuss that. <laughs> Because, um, <laughs> what, are you trying to get some free, free fucking training, bro? Five years? You want to know five years? <laughs> Come on. <laughs> How would I structure my training for five years? Bailey, come on, dude. Like, that's, uh, that's a little... <laughs> like, what do you, <laughs> what do you want? <laughs> like, seriously? Um... <laughs> number one I would use much less steroids than what I would have ever done I would have stuck with something like 300 tests for a very very long time um, training I would have focused on uh, progressive overload <laughs> I, very simple I would have focused on progressive overload you know <laughs> if you if you want any more in depth information outside of that, um, it's classified. <laughs> so, uh, Christopher Bailey, what supplement can I take to avoid getting married? It's the downside of Medi P. What? It's the downside of. What? Gain the size, but they get infatuated right away? I don't know what you're talking about. Clear yellow tint is oleate. Oleate sometimes means nothing. <laughs> and clear yellow tint does not mean that either. Um, <laughs> um, Alright. Nobody listened to what he said. <laughs> Clear yellow tint, like, ethyl oleate is a 100% clear product. It is clear, crystal clear. It looks like water. It, it has no yellow tint to it. The yellow tint comes from um, the steroid powders. Um, you know, it's not, ethyl oleate is 100% clear. I've made a crystal clear product before using ethyl oleate. So to say that yellow... Clear yellow tint is oleate sometimes. Like, don't even say... Like, that doesn't even... Sometimes? The, I mean, the fact that you put sometimes in there just completely makes everything that you just said 1,000% useless. <laughs> That's like saying... Uh, 
I don't even know. That That's like saying eating a bowl of protein and oatmeal makes me sick sometimes. I've never been sick off of it. <laughs> but sometimes I'm sure it could happen. <laughs> um, I don't... Um, all right, moving on. Christopher... Uh, sorry. <laughs> Full Arsenal, what's up? Uh, are you going cold turkey off everything or on TRT? I'm not off every... I'm not off anything. <laughs> I don't know. I'm not off of anything, bro. Uh, MIG-840 carrier oil. Um, just curious if you've used this and if I should avoid it. Uh, why? Why would you use it? What would be the reasoning? I've never used it. I don't see the need for it. You can make anything that you want to make without it. That is useful. <laughs> anything that you... I don't know. I wouldn't use it. I wouldn't bother using it. There's no reason to use it. No. Um, you can definitely smell glycol. Yes. <laughs> uh, Primo Deca test. Thanks a lot. Okay. Are you a fan of TRT plus Lotus Primo for a recomp? It doesn't matter what you use for a recomp. What matters in a recomp is your nutrition. It doesn't matter. The cycle doesn't matter in a recomp. Arms bruh. Do you add extra stuff to noise? Example, extra citrulline? Or, no, I don't. I used to. I used to add more citrulline, but um, I used to add... So, like, with my big noise, I take uh, Total War. And with that, I used to add more citrulline. I used to add more beta alanine. But I don't anymore. Um, yeah. Now I just do a scoop of Total War, a scoop of big noise, and I'm good to go. Two streams ago. Tennis elbow. There you go. Thank you, Tom. You the man. Tennis elbow, golfer's elbow, warm up, warm up, and get blood flowing. Mountain Dog has an amazing video on it. I have an amazing video on it. <laughs> two streams ago. Check out Tennis Elbow. Two streams ago. Um, any experience with SARMs? Thoughts? Um, experience? <laughs> um, there has been no reason for me to want to try them. Um, the thing about SARMs, the thing about SARMs is, uh, SARMs are great if you're a woman. SARMs work fantastic at a very low dose for women. The problem with SARMs is that to get anything out of them as a man, you have to use a relatively high dose of them. And that's high dose in the context of what they were initially intended for. You know, I mean, a, a SARM... The benefit of a SARM is that, you know is that it's very selective. <laughs> it's very selective in what it acts on at a low dose. But when you take a large dose to get a response from it, being a man, because you, you have to take a big dose of it if you're a man, then it loses its selectivity, and it's essentially still, even using it at a big dose, though, it's still trash for men, you know? So... For men, it's just not worth using. It's just it's just not worth it. If you're a woman, you know, a woman women are off e get off easy on this shit. Like they they get to use super low doses of Anavar and get great results. They can use low doses of SARMs and get great results. To be a woman and uh, a physique athlete is uh, <laughs> is is a pretty great life because you don't have to abuse anything. And, uh, you know, your organs and stuff, uh, you know, don't get the shit kicked out of it the way that guys do. 
Um, they get they get you know tortured in other ways, but still. Um, but yeah, SARMs, um, they're best for women. So, if you are a woman, then yes, use SARMs. If you are a man using SARMs, I'm going to call you a woman. <laughs> so, moving on. Uh, Viking, in your opinion, obviously everybody different on average. How many milligrams of test do you think it takes to see diminishing returns? Oh... I don't know, man. I mean, that's a good question. It's a good question, but... It's something... Uh... Yeah, I mean, you said it. It's something so individual, you know, because some people are going to experience gyno symptoms at a much lower dose than others. You know, guys that have had gyno surgery are likely to not experience any of that at all can, and can absolutely take their testosterone dose much higher without experiencing any side effects at all. Um so, yeah, it's, uh, I feel like it's just way too, it's way too dependent on the individual to, like, give a straight answer on that, you know. Um, I, I feel like, on average, it's safe to say that most guys can handle up to about three to 400 milligrams comfortably without any side effects at all. But there will be a lot of people that do, you know? Um, so, you know, I mean, the number could be, <laughs> the number could be 300. It could be 500. It could be 800. Some guys like 1200, the last time that I pushed my testosterone dose hard, I took it to 1,200, and I didn't need an AI, and things were fine, you know. Um, I didn't notice any negative side effects. It was homebrewed testosterone of my own. I don't know, man. It's just... That being said, that's coming from somebody that was using steroids for 10 years. So somebody that's new to it, like it's just, there, there's so many, there's so many different, uh, so many different things that can t t to give a straight answer on that. So sorry, I, you know, to find that out for yourself, like you literally just have to start at 300 and every couple weeks increase by 50 milligrams until you get to the point that you, you start to feel negative side effects. And it's a shitty way to go about doing it, but unfortunately that's going to be the way to go about doing it. And then, you know, from there, then, you know, is it worth it to keep pushing up once you start to experience side effects? I mean, the diminishing returns essentially start to kick in because you start to experience more sides than anything else. Um, in terms of muscle growth, something worth something worth um, considering is use the amount that you can gain one pound of lean muscle tissue per month. Now, that's very, very, very hard to dictate. Um, you know, it's very hard to figure out what that amount is because there's so much other weight being put on that isn't contractile tissue in a month's time period. You know, I feel like it's kind of safe to say that if you put on four pounds in a month's time, you probably put on about one pound of legitimate lean tissue. The other three pounds are, you know, nitrogen, tension, water, 
and fat. So, you know, if you can get that kind of progress on whatever dose you're using, just know that the more that you take beyond that point is not going to cause more muscle growth because we can just we can only build so much muscle so fast and using more steroids doesn't speed that process up you know so i mean that's something i think that is most important to remember is that you can only build so much muscle so fast on steroids and that's about one pound per month one pound of real lean tissue per month <clears throat> Andrew Robinson, what's up? Started running test only, 350, and been slowly adding 50 milligrams to test every four to eight weeks as I find how well I tolerate it. In your eyes, it'd be better to start bringing in master on than add more tests. No. No. So what I think would be smart for somebody that wants to take this to a high level, do exactly what you're doing. Add in a little more test. Keep adding it in, adding it in, adding it in. Once you start to experience a negative side effect. I know it sucks. You've got to experience a negative side effect. Once you experience a negative side effect, like itchy nipples, for example. At that point, then I would add in Masteron. Because at that point, that means that your estrogen DHT ratio is off. And your, your, your estrogen androgen ratio is off. So you add in Masteron, it levels out the ratio a little bit, and your estrogen side effect disappears. That doesn't mean that it lowered your estrogen. Your estrogen is still as high as it ever was. It just fixed the ratio, and now you're not experiencing those side effects. And then from there, I would keep testosterone where it's at and slowly start bumping up the Masteron dose over time probably just as fast as you increase that testosterone dose but I would stop the master <clears throat> I would stop the master on dosage at about 600 milligrams per week and once you reach that point you know across that time period of adding 50 milligrams you know every few weeks or whatever you'll probably be in 40 weeks by that point 50 weeks a year at that point. And by then, you probably would have developed um, a significant amount of muscle tissue, but also probably a significant amount of fat. Um, your insulin sensitivity is probably um, not optimal. At that point, it would be smart to back off your doses and do kind of a mini cut for about six weeks. So from that point, what you would do is drop your testosterone dose down to like, you know, maybe 300, drop the masteron, masteron dose down to about 100, bring in a little bit of growth hormone, give yourself time to um, recover from the stress of those hormones, even though that stress is going to be very minimal considering what you were using. Um, and you could probably throw in a little bit of clenbuterol to help lean out. And then after about six weeks of dieting, you could flip it back around and almost, you know, kind of start over. Work back up your testosterone dose. But then at that point, I would probably say, you know, you could keep Masteron in, you could dump the Clen, you could keep growth hormone in, and then you start bringing in Primo and start ramping that up. You know, so, yeah, just... I didn't timestamp that. That was probably... That probably would have been a good one to timestamp. Um, let's see. When did I start talking about that? Maybe... Maybe at an hour and 11? An hour and 11.30, we'll say. John Ludovic. What's up? How much mast would you add per week to a test 500 base first cycle <laughs> will cruise at 200 after well depends if you can handle the test 500 if you can handle 500 milligrams on your first cycle like that's pretty impressive 
I think most people that go into 500 milligrams of test per week on their first cycle hate it. <laughs> Chris Bailey, quit deleting your questions, man. I'll get to it. Calm down. As soon as I start getting close to your question, you message retracted. Jesus. Don't be such a girl, bro. <laughs> I'll get there. What was it? You, had, you uh, I pre-read it when you put it up there. I, I'm kind of reading as I'm answering. I'll get to it. <laughs> I know the one that you put right there, it says something along the lines of disregard what you said up there. <laughs> Don't worry about it. I'll get to it. All of these comments are in real time. I remember what I said about whatever. I'll get to it. I know all these are in real time. I, I... <laughs> Problem is, I can't... Like, I, I try to go down and read what you guys are saying in real time, and then I go back to where I was and, and just start working through the questions, so... I don't mind. I'll get to it, and I'll, I'll know what you were talking about. All right, anyways. <laughs> um, what were you saying? How much mass would you add to 500 test base? <sighs> so, as I was saying... Um, <laughs> as I was saying... Um, 500 test base is high. <laughs> Especially for a first cycle. Um, that's what I did my first cycle... If I could go back, I would fucking redo that shit real quick. Um, it was fucking awful. <laughs> um, if you haven't started it yet, I would strongly reconsider. <laughs> so, um, I would probably start at something around 300. And maybe bump it up to 350, maybe to 400. You know, because it, there's a very high likelihood that you're going to experience some side effects, probably some serious acne on your first cycle, your first time experiencing exogenous hormones. Um, but yeah, no, I would, I would start a 300 test, 350 test, 400 test, somewhere around there. And once you start to experience a little bit of side effects, like remember, the more you take is not better. You know, as I said earlier, like once you get to the point where you're building one pound of muscle per month, which is usually something along the lines of four pounds per week or, or month, four pounds total per month. Like more gear is not going to do you any better. It's just going to cause more side effects and more issues. So, um, so anyways, once you get to about 300 tests, 400 tests, whatever you're comfortable with, I would throw in 200 master on at that point and, uh, and then slowly start ramping up the master on. So, Nick, if someone used HCG to have a test base and then use low dose orals on top of that, no, <laughs> no, man, that's a terrible idea. You'll get, sh you'll, you'll still using HCG. You will, you'll still get shut down, and then it'll just be a complete waste of HCG. And then the HCG that you're taking is just going to be converting because it, it'll aromatize. You'll just be upping the estrogen, and and uh, yeah, I don't. I think that's a, a really stupid idea. Like if you're going to use steroids, use steroids. You know, don't use HCG as a test base. Use like if you if you're scared of doing like you're already using HCG, you're already injecting, you're already doing injections. Just inject testosterone. <laughs> you know. Um, I don't. Th I think it's a terrible idea. I, I don't even want to read the rest of it. Keith Summerall, tell me Sartan and Nabivalol while using Clen to help prevent left ventricular hypertrophy to a degree, yay or nay? I say yay because there are a lot more benefits going on with Clen besides it raising your heart rate a little bit. You know, so um, yes, I've done it. I, I've 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 done that. Um, tell me Sartan and Nabivalol and Clen at the same time. Um, I think it's fine. You know, I think I think it's a uh, nothing wrong with it. Whoops. All right, it's what a source uses. Never heard of it, so I thought I'd ask. Yeah, it's not necessary. A lot of sources are really stupid. <laughs> um, 
It's not, not worth it in my mind. Great answer on SARMs. Never heard anybody say that. You're welcome. Uh, Tom says, I use SARMs to crash my testosterone and get TRT. They worked like a charm. Only thing is, they were pretty worried about my liver. NAC cleared it up in three months. And then we've got, of course, the deleted bit by Christopher Andrew Robinson. It says, thanks. Nipples haven't quite gotten itchy, but have uh, awoken with a sharp nipple pain a few times. I'll push the test a little further for now. That all makes a lot of sense. Good. Okay, okay. Uh, you think it's possible to mimic the trend look using other stuff? I've tried many different combinations with other compounds, but never got that same sick look of 500 trend. Um, honestly, no. <laughs> I think trend is just something that... Uh, Trend is modern bodybuilding. If you're going to try to compete and be a modern bodybuilder, I think that trend is just... It is what it is. Unfortunately, I think trend is just... It's its own It's its own thing. Trend is modern bodybuilding. I mean, if you want to be a modern bodybuilder, you're going to have to experience trend uh, to some degree. So... It's unfortunate, but I feel that it's as real as it gets. Ah, all right. John West. What's up, dude? Rainer. Thoughts on main gaining? Does it limit the potential of muscle gain by being a, in a very limited surplus? You know, I, I think to just sh straight up answer your question, I'm going to say yes. I think it absolutely does. <sighs> to a degree. You know, I have mixed feelings on this because... <clears throat> I have mixed feelings on it, you know. I, I think main gaining because the thing that we know is that you can really only build one pound of muscle a month main gaining i feel with main gaining you kind of grow at the speed of one pound of muscle a month <laughs> one pound a month i think the the thing with main gaining is it's just really fucking hard. <laughs> it's just really hard to be that controlled year round, you know? Um, it's, it's just, it's hard. Like, if you can do it, if you can do it, I, th I think you'll be healthier for it. But... It just takes a, a different kind of person, I think, to be able to sustain that, you know, to sustain the, the calories that it takes to be able to do it. Like, like Greg Doucette is, is, I mean, he's a fucking specimen <laughs> to, to just be straight up about it, you know. I mean, it's really fucking amazing. To be able to do what he did. Like, I mean, the guy hasn't been fat in, in fucking forever. <laughs> um, yeah, it just, it takes a different, uh, a different person to be able to pull that off successfully. That's why there's not very many people that do it, that stay that lean all the time and able to, to you know, slowly progress. You know, it's just, I think... I think the people that will be able to main gain um, successfully will be primarily uh, ectomorphs. People that, that have a very hard time getting fat. People that aren't really food-driven, food-focused. People that don't have eating disorders. People that you know have just been lean their entire life and then they get on steroids. <laughs> like, those people... 
you know. Yeah. I wish that was me. I wish I was a person that was an ectomorph, was super skinny growing up, you know, because, I mean, those, those are the people that do really well with steroids, I feel. Um, yeah, it's... Uh, my, my, what was the original question? Um, do I think it limits the potential? Part of me thinks yes, part of me thinks no. You know, the part of me that thinks yes is that putting on the extra weight per month, I feel that it's going to help with strength. And the stronger you get, yeah, technically the more muscle you should be able to build with that, but... On the other hand, because we can only build so much muscle a month anyway, does it really matter? I mean, I feel like you're just putting yourself at a potential extra risk by getting that much stronger and putting on that extra fat. I mean, you're also you're you're also just just beating the shit out of your your organs, your 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 health. It, it's just it is healthier to maintain gain. But the thing is, is like I just feel that. For me, um, and for a lot of people that are very similar to me, in that, you know, we love food, um, you know, it's it's just not it's not going to be something that is is uh, maintainable for guys like me, yeah, or or girls as well, you know, that are very food focused. Um, so it's a great idea. It's a great, it, it, I, like I said, I wish I could do it, but uh, I, I, I just, it's not my, I'm not wired for it. You know, um, Benny says my genetics are perfect for main gaining. I have a fast metabolism. I've always been an ectomorph body type, just a little chunk in the tummy. Um, Viking, would you consider acne a side effect that's worth backing off a dose or more like gyno side effects and negative blood work? I mean, I, it, it, that depends on you, man. Like if you, if acne is something that you don't want, like nobody really wants acne, but if acne is not enough of something for you to stop, then, you know, that's your decision. Personally, I don't want acne. Personally, I don't want to deal with that shit. If you have acne, like, you don't want to wear tank tops. You don't want to be sleeveless. You don't want to be shirtless. Nobody wants to see, like, for real, nobody wants to see acne. Like, it's, it's, it's not a pretty sight. So, it really just kind of depends on, uh, it really just kind of depends on whether or not that bothers you or not. For me, personally, if I started to see acne, I would back off. But that's just me. You know, everybody's going to be different. So, that's more, that's that's definitely more up to you and what you're okay with. <sighs> really, I did one cycle, 500 milligrams. It was great. Great results. Even after natural, was about maxed out. I mean, that's good. It's rare, but that's great. Um, I'm on 250 now for three weeks, no sides, already bald, 128 over 81 blood pressure. I see your point, though. I'll just stick with this for a while. COVID-19 says, my blood pressure is always on point, 160 blasting or cruising. Any reason I should take Tell Me Sartan? Yes. <laughs> I've said it so many times. We don't take Tell Me Sartan for the blood pressure modulating benefits. That being said... If your blood pressure is 100 over 60, your blood work all looks fantastic. And by fantastic, I mean your kidney values never fluctuate. Your HDL cholesterol is 50 or higher. Your LDL cholesterol is is less than, I don't know, 80. 
your... Yeah, I mean... Because there's so many other things that Tommy Sarton can help with. Because the minimum effective dose of Tommy Sarton for all these other benefits is 20 milligrams a day. You're not going to get lower blood pressure on 20 milligrams a day of Tommy Sarton. Using Tommy Sarton for lowering blood pressure, you need to use like 40 to 80 milligrams. And it's more like 80. You know, a lot of people see nothing on 40. So you need to consider all the added benefits that Tommy Sarton brings us with the kidney health, um, brain health, left ventricular hypertrophy health, you know, heart health. Um, there's all these other things that are super beneficial to us that, uh, that we use it for. So, um, but if you've got great blood work, if everything looks perfect, regardless if you're blasting or cruising, then no, don't touch it. What's your opinion on IGFDS and LR3? Um, I don't think it's worth it. <clears throat> Someone on YouTube mentioned using HCG as a test base to start dabbling in PEDS if you don't want to get super shut down and to reduce some of the sides from using exogenous tests. So I was curious. No, I think it's a stupid idea. And whoever that YouTuber was, I would kick him in the nuts because I just think it's dumb. Uh, can I just use test and primo for my bulking and cutting cycles? Yes. Or is it better to switch compounds? No. Whether you're bulking or cutting is more dependent on whether you're in a surplus or a deficit with your calories. Cutting and bulking is determined by your diet, not your cycle. You can use the exact same cycle for cutting and bulking. Benny, yeah, I already read that. Slim GH work wonders. I hate food, by the way. It's a waste of 70% of my day. Arms, bro. Watching Chase while pinning my right glute. First for everything. Kyle Fisher, I ran 250 test C for eight weeks. That was my first cycle and started to lose hair quickly. Been on 150 since then, which is fine, but not cycle-like gains. Yeah, the thing is, uh, Kyle, if you're prone to losing your hair... It doesn't matter what you do. Like if you're if your dad or your grandpa on you know uh, your grandpa on your mom or dad's side has no hair, chances are adding in steroids regardless of what steroid it is, you're probably going to lose your hair. You know. Um Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean that's really all there is to say about it. So Twitch, <clears throat> disguised paper bag, what's up, Twitch watcher, uh, what made you choose to do steroids? I knew I wanted to be bigger, I knew I wanted to be bigger than what's capable naturally. I got to about the limit of what is capable naturally, and I just, I knew that it wasn't going to be enough for me, um, you know. Being lean, five foot nine ish, hundred and sixty pounds, like it's it, it it's a good look, like it's fine, you know. If, if you get there and you're happy with that, by all means, you know, stay with it. But for me, I knew that I wanted to be at least two hundred pounds and and lean. And that turned into 230 pounds, 240 pounds, 250, um, all the way up to the point uh, where I was 275 and lean. Um, you know, it, it's just, I knew, uh, it, it's just, yeah. Thing is, is, like, you should take it as far as you can naturally, and then once you get where you can naturally, you should, uh, I mean, that, that you decide whether or not you're happy with that. And if you aren't, you know, <laughs> you do what you can to take it to the next level. And unfortunately, steroids is the only way. So that's, that's what it was for me was, 
Like, sure, I could have gotten a little bit bigger naturally. Maybe to 170, as lean as I was. But that's still, that, that wouldn't have been enough. Like, I just knew that it was going to be, you know, I knew it was going to be like 200 pounds <laughs> or more that I wanted to be. No idea for name. I don't really have any questions to ask. Just like to listening. Thanks for answering my question. No problem. Uh, Kyle, if if can't bump test up to get to a cycle level, do you recommend running 150 test with another compound instead of just running test at a higher dose? If your hair started to fall out, Kyle, at 250 it's gonna it's gonna fall out no matter what you do so you need to make the decision do you want to have hair dude or don't you <laughs> so um i mean the bottom line is if you started shedding on 250 tests you're gonna lose your hair eventually regardless of steroids or not so yeah um Yeah, it is what it is. Like, I would, I mean, you, you've seen my decision. <laughs> I did not care. Um, and I really didn't, like, lose my hair. Like, the, you can see I've got stubble everywhere. I just started thinning, like, right here. So, like, I have, I have like, a pretty strong widow's peak where it faded right there. Because this used to go straight across. Like that, it used to it used to be completely filled in right there. Um, it's unfortunate, but I I don't regret it. <laughs> so, um, how exactly does DHA cancel out EPA and fish oil? How exactly? Uh, <laughs> I how exactly? What am I? Some fucking scientist? I don't know, bro. <laughs> it just does. <laughs> what is that? What is what is that from? Joe Dirt. <laughs> How exactly is a rainbow made? <laughs> How exactly does the sun set? How exactly does a posi track rear end on a Plymouth work? It just does. <laughs> uh, yeah. Uh, why are boobs good? <laughs> How exactly? I, I, I don't. I don't have the exactly answer for you. Um, it just does. <laughs> It just does. <laughs> uh, how superior is krill oil? Doesn't matter, man. EPA is all that matters. Uh, Benny Parcher. Oh, oh, I want to know. Do you think doing ab workouts is pointless, or do you think it's a good idea to work out the abs on top of dieting? I, I think ab work is... I used to be the fool that thought ab work was stupid and my abs were shallow for a very very long time and i think it's clear of the professionals who say that you don't need to do ab work either because their abs are very shallow i think nick walker is making a lot of guys work their fucking abs right now because his abs are so fucking thick and cut and deep that it's a, a super strong point to his physique. Like it's when he crunches his abs in his poses, like it just brings everything together and it looks fucking fantastic. Um, you know, I've the, for the last year, I've been hammering my abs really hard. And now that, you know, I took all of December off and put on a, a significant amount of body fat. What is very surprising to me is the fact that my abs, I've developed them 
so much so that even at this body fat percentage, I can still see them pushing through. And I think that that's, I think that's great. So I, I think abs, whoops. I think abs absolutely should be worked consistently and just as hard as any other muscle group. Kyle Fisher, take finasteride. I mean, it does, it, it, it's not going to guarantee anything. It's just going to slow the, slow the, slow down the chances that you're going to lose hair, and it might not work at all. You know, I, I don't know. Not worth it, in my opinion. Nice try, gamer. What's up? My friend did 25 milligrams of MK2866, 10 milligrams of MK677, and 10 milligrams of GW for seven weeks. Went from 650 to 450 nanograms per deciliter. Do you think he should have done just like 20 Anavar? Would it shut you down just as much? I mean, the thing is, is 650 to 450 is not significant. It doesn't, that's not going to make a difference. You're not going to notice a difference in how much muscle you can hold uh, between 650 and, and 450. I mean, that could have just been a natural fluctuation in his day to day. You know, that's not, that's not, to me, that's not significant enough. Especially if you've only taken one one blood panel and then another blood panel, because that blood panel is just a snapshot in time of what your levels were at at that moment in time. Like he could have been at a high point, you know, when he did the 650, and had a low point when he did the 450. Like who who knows? But that's not significant enough for it to matter, you know. So. Do I think he should have just run like 20 milligrams of Anavar? Like, if you're going to use something, just fucking shut yourself down. Like, if you're, like, otherwise it, it's, it's no good. Otherwise you're not going to be making any progress. If you're not using something that's going to completely re replace your testosterone dosage and be at a super physiological level, what good is it actually doing? Besides, well, the only thing you're going to get from it is negatives to your fucking liver. <laughs> so... I think that what your friend did was pointless. Do you use a separate drawing needle or do you use the same needle you draw the oil with to inject? No, I use a separate drawing needle. My drawing needle is uh, an 18 gauge needle and then my injection needles are a 25 gauge needle. Uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. Chicks dig bald dudes. Man, if I was doing this for chicks, I would have stomped a long, long, long... I wouldn't have even started. Chicks were way better when I was natty and 160 pounds. <laughs> uh, any sups from your source you've tried for sleep issues? No. What kind of sleep issues are you having, though? Do you follow any HCG protocol? No. I, I would never use HCG. It's not even something worth using if you want to have kids. Because many of us are not infertile <laughs> when on steroids. Most people that I know conceive their children while on cycle. I was conceived mid-cycle. <laughs> like... Steroids do not make you infertile the way that people... Like, some people, sure, some people will be infertile on cycle. But there are many, 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 many people out there that can impregnate a woman just fine on steroids. They once tried to use testosterone as a male contraceptive. It didn't work. <laughs> it worked very well at uh, keeping guys horny and impregnating bitches. So, um, no, I, I, if, if it came to that point for me that on gear, 
I could not, I was not fertile. I wouldn't use HCG, I would use HMG. HMG is a way more potent product when it comes to bringing back fertility. So, um, but yeah, I, I, I'm, I'm not even concerned about it for a second. So, so what is next for you? I have stopped following you for a few months because I had some health issues. How's the new situation with the gym going? Uh, gym situation is going great. I made a video on that um, over the weekend, I think, or Friday. I made a video on my gym situation. Um, it's coming along. Uh, still set to be ready in two months. So I'm looking forward to that. But Jacob, welcome to the Homebrew Video Access. Thank you. Email me, chaseirons.gmail.com, so I can get you the info. Just do GH and test. Sheesh, peptides. Yeah, agreed. Um, Josh, good physique. Thanks, dude. Uh, Chris Bailey, preach. Uh, long time without checking your channel. I'm glad your podcasts are still online. Best wishes from Spain. Spain, I was in Spain two weeks ago, bro. I was in uh, Barcelona and Valencia. I've actually got a shitload of footage on my phone that I need to put on my computer so I can make a honeymoon video. Do you drink water around your meals? I've read it dilutes stomach acid and makes digestion much slower. Same with using water to gulp down sups. Thinking of adding a shot of apple cider vinegar. Um, I, I do not drink around my meals. I try to stop drinking water about 15 minutes prior to a meal I don't drink any water while I'm eating unless I'm about to like choke on something and then I wait about 15 minutes until I continue drinking after a meal so um, yeah no I, I it, it's true I, I completely agree with that drinking lots of water while eating a meal is going to um, impede digestion of it because it's going to dilute stomach acid um, it can cause more bloating so, yeah, I completely avoid water while I'm eating. Um, and then, you know, if you are going to, the best thing that you can do is, uh, is yeah, use apple cider vinegar in your water. You know, throw a couple ounces in a glass of water. Um, that'll definitely help keep your stomach acid nice and strong. Um, personally, I love apple cider vinegar. I think it's a, a great thing to include. Many thanks for the answer. I feel same as you. Um, Jose Squats, what up, man? I've been using 75 milligrams a week of Tren Ace during my cruise periods, and my blood work is perfect. 75 milligrams a week. Very nice. Um, I'm a nutritionist bodybuilder who also loves cardio. That's probably why. Am I harming myself? I would say no. Uh, I would say absolutely not. Trenbolone is really manageable um, at a dose of 100 milligrams uh, per week or less. So personally, I like to throw in 50 milligrams a week. Um, I found that that was a very benign dose <laughs> for me. So um, yeah, I uh, 50 to 100 milligrams is a, is a safe, solid dose. Like you'll get the benefits of it. And uh you know, none of the negatives, <laughs> essentially. So, um, yeah, I think what you're doing is very smart. Uh, da, da, da. Welcome to the members only video access. Thanks, Jose. You need to to view the members only videos. You need to go to um, my channel and then go to my playlist and then you'll find the members only video playlist and there you go have at it how to improve hdl and ldl cardio <laughs> the number one way to improve hdl and ldl naturally is more cardio cardio raises hdl and lowers ldl and uh not only is this found in literature but i do have um a cardio queen that i am married to and uh, her blood work 
blew my mind when I saw it. Um, we got blood work done at the same time a while back, and her like this is unheard of. Her she, so she she typically runs about an hour a day. She has like one rest day a week, and then she'll do uh, a long run of ten to twenty miles on the weekend. Um, you know, she has a, a running coach and they have their whole program or whatever. That's beside the point. So she does that much cardio a week. Her HDL was higher than her LDL. Her HDL was something like 80 or 90. Her LDL was something like 50. I looked at her numbers and I was like, what, what, what the fuck is this? This is insane. And I started digging deeper into it and then learned that yeah, this cardio pumps the shit out of HDL, um, so it sucks. But um, outside of that, like I couldn't, I couldn't change it with food. I couldn't change it with supplements. Um, the only other way to do it is just to go straight up with azetamide at ten milligrams a day. Um, that's very effective. So, um, you're probably in the same, uh, pool as me. Um, so I would recommend using a Zetamibe. Christopher Bailey can use together for better results. HCG, MC, HMG combo. Can you? Sure. Will it be better? Uh, not necessarily. Um, so... You won't see me doing that, anyways. <clears throat> By the way, if any of you are wondering, I'm typing in timestamps for all these questions. Is there any way to undo the gut growth slash waist size increase from growth hormone? Yeah, man. Have you, We've talked about this, Nathan. By the way, welcome. What's up? Um... We've talked about this. I mean, Dave Palumbo is a prime example of, like, Palumboism is named after him. Have you seen him now? <laughs> like, the dude has has no waste. The dude has no anything. I mean, the, the guy, I mean, congrats to him to be able to stay lean and drop off literally all the muscle that he created. And his waste is, is non-existent. Yes, absolutely you can. I mean... Dave Palumbo is is prime example of it. Feeling sorry for these TikTok kids popping SARMs like they're candy. It's so dumb to take stuff so early, but at least don't use the least research and underdose stuff. Yeah, I agree. I agree, Techco. Why do you have a check? What is all this? Who are you? <laughs> um, great to know. I'm from Madrid. Love Valencia. Yeah, we were in Barcelona and Valencia. I now live more south at Murcia province in a cape at Mediterranean with an interior sea called Cabo de Palos. Cape Palos. Cool, man. Anything less gross than apple cider vinegar? You could take apple cider vinegar pills, but I think apple cider vinegar is... I kind of like it. I like how it tastes, but I'm a weirdo. <clears throat> Thanks for the answer. I'll start doing the 15-minute window. You mentioned you got to 275 on a mild cycle for 500 test monitor mass, 300 primo, correct, but you've abused up to 3 grams a week, more than, <laughs> of gear on past cycles, correct. Do you think those past cycles were beneficial? I don't think that it sped up my progress any. If anything, it did more harm than good. So, I don't think that it was worth it. Um, yeah, I, I absolutely don't think that it was worth it. Just a lot more harm than good. As in, building additional androgen receptors, or was it a waste of time and health? No, I don't think I don't think using more built any more androgen receptors than what I could have built. Can't tell me Sartan help with HDL and LDL also. Yes. 
but it's it's not as effective as something that's directly effective at that, like a Z of my... Oh my god, my wife's HDL is 80, LDL is 40. <laughs> my HDL is 30, my LDL is 180, I know, shame on me. Hey man, yeah, uh, we've all been there. But yeah, that's exactly exactly what I'm talking about. Um, using 300 milligrams of DECA for five years straight. Death sentence? Um, no, I would say no, but I, I don't know why somebody would want to do that. Uh, you'll never see me do that. Uh, the check is YouTube verification. You get it at 100,000 subscribers, assuming you're not imperson impersonating anyone. Wow, dude, congrats on 100,000 subscribers. That's... Tech O. Who who are you? <laughs> that's yeah. I mean, congrats. That's awesome. I would that I would love to be there someday. That would be that would be sick. Look at you, hundred and thirty-eight thousand subscribers with the check. Oh, you're a streamer. How about that? You stream Fortnite? Is that what that is? Fortnite streamer? Wow, you play a lot of Fortnite. You get a lot of views. <laughs> what are you doing in this little channel, bro? Hey, man. Thanks for being here. I'll give you a shout-out. Techo. If you like... Pretty sure that's Fortnite, right? That's Fortnite, isn't it? <clears throat> Gaming videos. Lots of them. So... Um, very nice. Good work. <clears throat> I drink apple cider vinegar daily and I enjoy it. Yeah, I enjoy it too. Labs came back. High red blood cells. Hemoglobin. Hematocrit. Anything to be worried about there. So, high red blood cells, high hemoglobin, high hematocrit. Um, what were the numbers? Was it over 55? Much appreciated. It's a bit of a different niche. Yeah, I, I make gaming videos. You're welcome, man. I respect respect the grind. Like it is not easy, not easy to get to a, over a hundred thousand subscribers. I mean, it's pretty awesome that you did it. Uh, you know, with uh, with gaming because that's a fucking huge industry. Um, Looks like you've been making videos for a couple years, more consistently in the last year. But yeah, man, it's not easy. It definitely, definitely takes time and consistency, and and or something just really fucking special, <laughs> you know, uh, some special fucking videos, you know. But congrats, it's pretty, pretty crazy. Hopefully, I'll get there someday. <clears throat> Labs came back. All right. What'd you say? Hematocrit 57. 57 is significant. Um, Kyle, like, that would be a reason to be on uh, Tell Me Sartan. Um, Tell Me Sartan will help lower that. A couple years at this point. Been difficult at points, but always push through it. Just raw time and consistency. Yep. Oh, yes. <clears throat> yeah, 57 is a little high. Um... You know, I like to keep it between 50 and 55. Um, but yeah, uh, if you're not on Tell Me Sartan, that's definitely a reason to get on it. It'll help bring it down. Um, if it doesn't help bring it down, then you would want to use Enalapril. Enalapril is very potent uh, at dropping hematocrit. Um, the biggest complaint and probably one of the most studied things on Enalapril is the fact that it makes people... Uh, anemic because it can drop hematocrit so rapidly and effectively. Um, so for us, it's kind of a good drug. Um, Kyle, email me. Uh, I know you've emailed me before, but email me if you forgot, chaseirons.gmail.com. Email me and uh, we can talk more about that because I'm about to get off of here um, and I can kind of help you point you in the right direction for some stuff there. Would you ever consider selling L-carnitine in bulk for a discount? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 
Email me, chaseirons.gmail.com. Let me know. Does metformin slash azetamibe zap your strength or energy at all? I haven't noticed it. What dose do you take? I take 1,000 metformin before my last meal, and I take uh, 10 milligrams of azetamibe every morning. I've listened to one of Stan Efferdine's rhino rants on the topic. He seems to be against these meds on principle. Yeah, I mean, I, I think everybody... Everybody, of course, wants to use as little products as possible and try to take care of things naturally, but... I mean, people are going to be people and, and do what's going to be easiest for them. And unfortunately, in our community, drugs are the first thing that we like to go to. So I would rather somebody use those things and get the benefits of them while working towards trying to fix things naturally. So, you know, it is what it is. You said, tell me, starting 40 milligram starting dose. If you, like, for you, like, that would be something, absolutely. Um, but yeah, email me. I, I can help you out with some stuff. Um, I've actually been watching you quietly for a few months now. Love your content and your consistency is going to push your channel further than you think on this platform. Thanks, dude. Wow, you've been watching for a little bit. Thanks, man. I appreciate it. <clears throat> I'll email you. <laughs> is that the Lo-Fi Hip Hop Girl channel in the background? <laughs> yes, it is. I, I like I like lo-fi hip hop. Um, yeah, that's lo-fi girl. <laughs> I I like chill hop music. It's, it's uh, relaxing. Isn't Stan clearly on gear? No, he he is on gear. He is, but he tries to. When I say, I guess natural was the wrong word. Uh, Stan is definitely on on stuff, but he tries to take care of things with food and and exercise, which is absolutely the way that things should be done, but. Again, you know, in our industry, people want to take a pill for stuff, and they're going to take a pill for stuff. Like, So you might as well point them in the right direction um, instead of just tell them to work out harder, you know? So, all right, I did it. I got through all the comments. We made it. All right, guys. It's been two hours and three minutes. Solid stream tonight. Thank you, everybody, for coming in and hanging out with me. Um, we got to be in our dance class in about 25 minutes, so I got to get off of here. I'm going to eat a bar real quick and, uh, and hit the bathroom, and we'll be off to dancing. So that's it for today. I'm going to get off of here. Do you have any other good lo-fi channels? Uh, Chill Hop. Chill Hop Music is a, a great channel. Um, Chill Hop is what I typically listen to. Chill Hop Music is the station that... I like that one, and Lo-Fi Girl, of course, is uh, is good. But yep, I got dance class to get to, so um, yeah, we've we've kept that going since our wedding. Um, so I'm gonna get off here. Thanks again, everybody. Thanks for stopping by, and uh, yeah, I will be back tomorrow in about 22 hours. So um, remember to subscribe, hit the notification bell, so you know when these things start. I also post up the live stream when it's going to start early so you guys can hit that notification so you'll get you'll know when these things start. So, anyways. Just joined and you missed everything. I'll be back tomorrow, dude. So, come back tomorrow. I'll talk to y'all tomorrow. So, later.